This is Coral, and you're listening to The Forward Thinker Show. Today, we're joined by Aiden Akama, a computer science student at Stevens College, co- content creator on TikTok and Instagram, and a software engineering intern at DoorDash and Datadog in the fall. Hey, Aiden, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Hi, Coral. How are you doing today? <laughs> doing pretty good. I just finished up two quizzes today and then a bunch of other classes but other than that pretty good today how are you doing that's great that's great where are you calling in from um i'm calling from new jersey hoboken new jersey um yeah i know you guys are all the way in florida so oh no we're we're, we're down here in miami florida well aiden you know something that i really love about you and like your TikToks is that you're very funny and not only <laughs> funny on TikTok, but you're also kind of like authentic on LinkedIn. And so that's that's sort of like the topic I want to get into today. But before I get into that, I, I do want to start. Where are you from? Um, I'm from New Jersey. Uh, my hometown is in Montclair. That's where I grew up. My mom is from the Philippines and then she moved here with her mom. And my dad, had yeah, he lived in Jersey City. So we've all pretty much been in New Jersey. Oh, time. that's so awesome that your mom's from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, what got you into computer science? That's a good question. Um, I actually started really young. Uh, it was like one summer when I was like 10 or 11. I think my mm-hmm. parents couldn't, they are pretty busy, so they like dropped me off at some summer camp over the summer, and it just happened to be a robotics camp. Um, we did stuff like Scratch and EB3, Lego robotics stuff. I fell in love with it from there, and then I kept pursuing it. Yeah, I started pretty young. I've been doing it for about seven, eight years so far. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The, you're you're the kids that everybody's scared of. <laughs> 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 I'm like, you come into my program in one class? No, yeah, I've been coding since I was three years old. <laughs> this is him. <laughs> this is Aiden. <laughs> I just got lucky, to be honest. I just happened to find coding when I was super young. So that's so awesome. And so, how what was that robotics camp about? How how did you feel during that time? Um, so it was mostly the EV three Lego robotics stuff. Uh, we mm-hmm. did really fun things like um, we did like the soccer bots competition where mm-hmm. we build like robots that could play soccer with an infrared like ball. Wow. And yeah, my team actually went to to nationals for that. That was awesome. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I used to be a robotics nerd, um, but then I started transitioning into like web development, game development stuff, mm. uh, like outside of robotics during high school. Mm. You know, one of my uh, first projects was like um, coding with an Ar- with Arduino and like a robotic car. That's so. And cool. then just like 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 making it turn, making it dance. It was so fun. It was in um in a coding camp as well for high schoolers when I was fifteen. It was super fun. That's awesome. I always yeah. wanted to do Arduino. Really? I yeah. I never, <laughs> I never touched Arduino. Out. I only did the um like the baby like Lego stuff, mm. and then I never. And then we went into like Python like straight away. So I wasn't able to do the Arduino. I really want to do that though. Mm. Well, Aiden, I I'm like I, I have to I'm I have to be honest like. Every time I see your post and, like, your comments on LinkedIn, I'm kind of uh, like, how did this guy, <laughs> <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> I want to know, like, how how did you get into content creation? Content, and, like, oh, gotcha. Yeah, and also doing computer science at the same time. Like, what sort of motivated you to do it, to, to do that? Mm. So... It started off as two separate things. Like, mm-hmm. I separately did the robotic stuff. And then mm-hmm. on the side, I started making YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Um, I started YouTube also really early, like 2016 mm-hmm. when I was 13. Um, I started with Minecraft content because I used to watch, uh, I don't know if you heard of these guys, Dan TDM. I watched him a lot. <gasps> yes! <Yeah. laughs> like, Think Noodles, I watched a lot. Sunday, I watched a lot. Um, Sky does Minecraft. I watched all those guys. So, like, <laughs> It went straight to like my 13 year old brain. So I was like, okay, I want to do what those guys did. So yeah, at first it was two, those two were like completely separate things. I didn't combine those parts of my life until I got into college. Mm-hmm. When I got into college, I had to slow down obviously on the whole Minecraft stuff or whatever, cause I had to focus on academics, of course. Yeah. So I was like, okay, instead of doing Minecraft, why don't I mix the two things and I start doing computer science content? 
I did that my freshman year, and I did like these POVs, like POV, uh, you try to fit in with like the comp sci kids or whatever. That's how I started. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then it like it just not took off, but I saw numbers and I saw it was doing well, so then I just kept doing it. So now I just like merge those two parts of my legs into one thing. And you. You started off with with those POVs, and then you transitioned to TikTok, and then what happened there? Um, I'm not too sure. I don't know. It's kind of a blurry area. Once I did like I did those POVs on TikTok, mm -hmm. um, and then I saw those did well, so then I started just I th I just rode that wave. I think I just kept doing computer science content, and then transitioned from that Minecraft stuff, and then started making just computer science content. Uh, once I saw that it was doing well, and then yeah, that's how I ended up to where I am now with the comp side tiktoker thing oh my gosh that is so amazing <laughs> like what was the what was your favorite um video that you've shot oh that's a good question um honestly i had a lot of fun with those computer science pov's like mm -hmm. pretending to fit in with those guys because mm -hmm. those were the only videos that i really like edited and i like did this whole like production thing with them Ooh. yeah other than that i think oh there's this one this isn't tiktok mm -hmm. but on youtube i made i went to the jp morgan code for good hackathon mm -hmm. and actually i did a vlog there so i was recording mm -hmm. while doing the whole coding stuff that was really fun to make just like the recording process and editing after and seeing like the the finished product after I was done that was really cool. With the JP Morgan <laughs> Hackathon, um, it's like a special process with them. So mm -hmm. how you get in is you apply for their internship, and instead of doing like the phone interview, technical interview, mm -hmm. you actually do this hackathon, and they like monitor all the kids there. So all the kids there were like you know applying for internships, have previous internships. They were like you know top one percent of CS. Um, like Ivy League kids, so it's just a hackathon full of just insanely cracked people, and it was like wow. it's an honor to be like a part of something like that, especially because um, I wasn't at that point in time I wasn't really familiar with the whole internship stuff. I was making like mm. computer science content about just I don't know random stuff, not about internships at that point. I didn't know much, so mm -hmm. to be a part of like a hackathon with all those kids that just had that much experience is is crazy to me. And I was one of the, it was like 30%, 40% of the kids that went there who got internship mm -hmm. offers. So I was luckily, luckily one of those kids. <laughs> Aiden, what is an internship and how can that help you become a better engineer? That's a good question. Okay, so <laughs> an internship, like it's a little test sort of, like not a full role, but you sort of have a role of an engineer for the short period of time, three, four months over the summer or fall, winter, whatever season that you have it in. Mm -hmm. um, it's just to see if the if you are a good fit for this company first off, and it's sort of like an onboarding for um, you to get like a return offer. And as mm -hmm. you said, yeah, it was a lot easier to get an internship, especially during COVID 2020, 2021. Um, I heard like the fan companies they give out internships like like candy back then. Mm -hmm. But um, after the whole um, recovery of like the market, the market's like pretty bad right now. So yeah. <laughs> it is literally like you're like mining for diamonds getting mm -hmm. internships now. It's like super, yeah. super hard to get internships. Now. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, internships to sum it up, just like a short period of time where you're sort of working as a full time engineer with this company to see if you're a good fit for it. What sort of things sort of helped you? get into those internships like because you know like b professionalism has changed a lot you know especially in the tech space like you can literally make jokes online and you can still get a job and or if you want to work like at a startup or a big company you can be yourself but it's so hard right now that it's kind of like should i be more professional should i be more lean back what are, what are your thoughts on that that's a good question um i think I feel like there's two sort of routes they could go um, <clears throat> because before I'm sure the bar was a lot lower. So really all you needed was that base set of skills and you're pretty, pretty much had like a good chance at getting the internship. But now the bar is like really high. So you could either go the personality route, I like to call it, um, where you are that sort of laid back person, have that set, like good set amount of skills, but also have like a really good personality. Um, because a lot of a lot of companies go, not only go for just the technical skills now, but they're also looking for people that stand out and have that personality to fit in with whatever work culture that they have. 
Um, so I sort of went that route, which is probably why a, a company like Datadog picked me up because I know they're very culture oriented, like work culture oriented. They want people with like personality, but also are technically really good as well. Um, or you could go, you know, the super uh, professional route where it's like, you know, you speak the corporate and then you have the skills to back up whatever you're saying. Um, I didn't really like the idea of that route, so I, I went the, the other path personality route i i love i love how you mentioned that because uh, people do get scared of like being themselves online you know like and like showing your personality because it's something that like in like a i used to work for like a, a company that was more you know corporate corporate mm -hmm. and they were like oh no you can't be yourself on social media don't share social media you gotta be kind of like mm -mm -mm -mm. And right. they were more of like an older company. And I was kind mm -hmm. of like, oh, okay. But then I see other people and they're being more relaxed and they're going out there. I'm just like, what's going on? Uh, that's interesting. I think, yeah. I think with the more like traditional companies or like the older ones, I feel like they would definitely have an opinion like that where it's like they want to keep it the same as it was before where it's like suit and tie, professionalism, stuff like that. But um, I think with the more i guess modern companies like fang and mm -hmm. stuff they're definitely more relaxed on it where um i i, I kind of see well actually i'm not in the corporate setting so i don't want to give too much of an opinion on it but <laughs> i sort of see where it's like heading into like the you know wearing a t-shirt jeans at work remote work where it's going mm -hmm. to like more focused on work-life balance versus the suit and tie whatever that is mm. how was the experience of you getting an internship like while also making content at the same time that was so stressful really? <laughs> that was horrible <laughs> i don't want to do that again that me was neither really <laughs> it's a rite of passage for oh everyone my God. <laughs> like i know people who are super stressed about like the job searching and just like that alone and yeah doing content on top of that was <laughs> probably the worst time of my life like that summer <laughs> i was stressing that was horrible oh my gosh um if i <laughs> i don't even know how to improve upon that because it's just it's so just overloading and so much work mm -hmm. i don't know i just really had to i had to dial it back on the content i think that helped me a lot and really just focus on getting that internship because i know the internship would be like my main source of income the next summer and you know tiktok's just like a a, a sort of thing that I just do on the side for fun. So dialing it back on the on the content and really focusing on the internships, I think, was the best best route for me. Mm -hmm. And on the internship side, could you tell me about, like, that first time you felt super stressed about uh, a part of that process? Um, there was a point in time, it was around, like, October, around October, mm -hmm. November, where... Um, I got in a bunch of processes. I was in the DoorDash process, Datadog process, UKG, Kearney and Co, and the JP Morgan process all at once. Wow. And yeah, I had like two, I had four, I had three interviews in one week. And at the same time I was making, you know, the whole TikTok thing. Cause mm -hmm. that was, that was going. So that was <laughs> preparing. <laughs> And I've never, I never have done a previous like internship or oh. application process before. So that was my first oh. experience with oh interviews my God. and stuff. It was stressful. I mean, I was going into these interviews like barely prepared. I knew like one thing about the company and like what they did. <laughs> and, and like, I don't know, like five commonly code questions that they asked. Because, oh, oh my God, at the same, like, it was grinding leak code before the interviews, doing the content, and then doing the interviews. Like, the leak code part was, that was bad. I was lucky, I think the thing that kept me sane was I was lucky enough to, um, this actually drove my content, or my, my channel up a lot, it was when I live streamed leak code. Because I was able to practice for these interviews, and, you know, make content and live stream at the same time. So... That was super helpful. I think I'm really proud of myself for thinking of something like that to kill two birds with one stone like that. But anyways, other than that, it was still super stressful even though I did that. <laughs> you should start a Twitch and just do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> just like lead code with Aiden. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I kind of want to do that next summer. Start a Twitch. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. 
we'll see we'll see you know i am like i'm kind of like i'm i'm thinking back to the fall and like just like every day just felt like a battle because it's always something new yeah. with this process it's either like it, it it kind of feels like like you're going you think that it's gonna be easy but mm-hmm. because of how the market is right now, it's kind of like 10 times harder. And when yeah. you think you might get it, then you get pushed back and you get rejected. And so that sort of experience kind of makes you feel like, ugh. Exactly. So, <laughs> I was not thinking about this when I was 15 years old. When I was 15 years old <laughs> and I started coding, I was like, oh, my God, I love to code. I love the world of tech. But mm-hmm. then as a, a in college, I'm like, the world of tech is, is hard, you know? <laughs> yeah. exactly. It is. Yeah. What what else um, would you say for people who want to who are interested, who are like tech enthusiasts, who are interested in the world of technology? What else? What is something that you think we should warn them about? Oh, we should. There's a lot that we should be warning. Actually, yeah, there's a lot that we should be warning them about. I think the number one thing is um, first off, this internship process is Mm -hmm. super hard. Getting an internship, it is not like how it was like two years ago. I think they should know that when they're coming in, that the market is, is pretty cooked right now. Mm-hmm. And um, they should be, they should know that they have to work really hard to succeed in in this whole tech sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and number two, I think, um, I think, ugh, I hate to say this, but getting an internship is necessary. Like even, even though it's super hard to get, it's so necessary to get one before you graduate, I feel mm-hmm. like just because the bar is raising and um if you don't have experience like that when you're graduating there's like it's like there's no point in having that degree at this point Mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy so yeah just uh be prepared to work harder than what these these like content creators and like cs tiktokers are saying about about cs two years ago yeah yeah, it, I used to watch a lot of the day in my life and watch the little, you know, like food vlogs. Like, oh my god, my company got me food and uh-huh. all this stuff. <laughs> I'm just like, girl, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> How did your family feel about you doing all of this? Um, that's a good question. A lot. So, a lot of my family isn't. They aren't in tech. They. Mm. I was. I'm the first like tech sort of guy. Mm. Um, my mom did fashion and she started like this whole comp- company thing. So she's sort of like an entrepreneur. She is an entrepreneur. What am I saying? Ooh. She's an entrepreneur. Yeah. She's like a, she started this kids clothing company line. It was called Kana. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was doing pretty well. Um, and then something happened in the background, whatever. And then my dad is in the, uh, he's in the army. So I'm mm. a military dad. Um, but at first they were definitely skeptical about it because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I I played a lot of video games and they sort mm-hmm. of associated me coding with video games and mm-hmm. it's sort of like it's just like oh computers it's rotting his brain whatever mm-hmm. so they weren't fully supportive of it at first but once I got into college and I started putting in that work and they saw the the work being put in then they they're more accepting of it of course it's kind of like you you both you had the influence of both your mom and your dad because you have the discipline of a military man but the creativity <laughs> and the 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 actions of an entrepreneur from your mom and so that's so interesting but like they kind of they weren't so supportive in that beginning part because you were also doing content and then you were also you know doing computer science and you were also lead coding and they were kind of like this guy, he's been playing video games this whole time. It's running his brain. And yeah. now he's doing this? I'm like, yeah. I can't imagine. Right, right, like, my right. mom sometimes, she's like, oh, could you, like, like, she wants she wants me to, like, if she wants me to, like, make something or, like, you know, or, like, help her with, like, the phone. And she's like, oh, you're in tech, so you you, you kind of know how this works. <laughs> it's like, like, if you say you're in tech, then you're like, oh, you know everything. You know how to use your yeah. phone, how to use the camera, how to do everything. Exactly, so it's exactly. like, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> for people from outside of that world you know but you know we don't also want to like make people feel sad or feel bad about like hey i want to get into tech i want to be a part of this tech thing it's, it's it's not just about you know internships there's a lot of other opportunities as well definitely definitely to to you know to be in the world of tech you know um could you explain what are some of other ways you could use your experience as a code like coding how you can use your skills as um as a coder for 
other things outside of getting a job. Yeah, so there's, yeah, I think that's what, that's like one of the reasons why I love computer science so much is that there's just so much ways that you could branch out into. Like, it's not just the corporate world they have to go into. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs, that, as you said, that listen to this. So, I mean, entrepreneurship and computer science, they like go hand in hand, like developing an application that solves some sort of problem and then building a company off of that. It's, it's a lot easier when you know how to build that product and you have the coding skills to do that. Building products uh, as a software developer, a software engineer, it's it's a lot easier when you actually have the technical skills to do it. I don't have much experience with running a company, so mm -hmm. but I do. But have... no, you are an entrepreneur. You're a content creator. <laughs> That's true. A That's content a creator. It's planning. It's shooting. It's making. Mm -hmm. It's all aspects of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is not just about building a company. Any sort of project that you build that that makes you an entrepreneur, and so I think. You are qualified, bro. <laughs> yeah. So I was gonna, um, I was gonna talk about is sort mm -hmm. of the social media aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I've seen that social media and building that presence, especially um, if you want to find a job. Not just that, but if you want to find a job or having a sort of brand around yourself as a person is super important. A personal um, brand. Yeah, I think the idea of building that, especially in the tech world, is super important. Mm -hmm. I've seen a bunch of people taking that route. Um, like, have you, I, I think you shared with me, Morgan Young, she mm -hmm. like, she definitely leverages her, her personal brand on LinkedIn to get these different opportunities that she's getting, like NYC Capital and stuff. I like building a personal brand. I feel like that's super important in the tech space and, mm -hmm. and especially entrepreneurship. I mean, if you want to pitch a product to an audience, the easiest way is to already have that audience established with your brand. Personally, having a social media brand has given me like tons, tons and tons of opportunities that I wouldn't have had before without it. Um, one thing is a super direct thing. I put it on my resume. So that's like a super, yeah, it's like straight into corporate. But um, I, it was a really good talking point during my interviews. And my interviewers have brought it up. Like I didn't even, I was the one to bring it up. The interviewers were. And they saw my resume and they're like, oh, you're a content creator for computer science. Could you talk more about that? And it gives me a talking point and it makes me a lot of a very memorable applicant when doing these interviews. So that's one direct thing if you have wanted to build a brand. Number two, this is more indirect. I'm doing the sort the talks and the I think the speaking part of it and going to these things and speaking like this podcast, for example, or um, I went to the a head starter event where i spoke as a panelist about internships um after i spoke there and i gave my little i don't know presentation or whatever i had like five people reach out to me that um heard about me from the talk and were at that event and asked me questions and i think one person talked about their like or two people talked about like their startups and if i wanted to be a part of it like it it gives you a bunch of opportunities if you have a personal brand because it makes networking a lot easier because the people who are, um, the, there are going to be people who want to network with you. And mm -hmm. instead of you reaching out to them, they're reaching out to you. So a it's like, yeah. So you're saying a personal brand is kind of like, you know, that, that phrase of like, you can spend all your time chasing butterflies, but if you create a garden, AKA your personal brand, the butterflies are going to come to you. And the butterflies yeah, that's in question. Really the butterflies in questions could be either jobs, recruiters, people who want to join your startup, people who want to collaborate and make content together. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so it, it's, it's so fun that, you know, a personal brand can help you do that. And I think that's something that we should all do if you want to expand and grow in the tech space, that's something that, you know, if you have sort of, you know, cause the forward thinker show, we want to help people expand, you know, their, their ideas on the world of business and technology, you know, not be so close minded and think that, Oh, I have to suit up and have a thing and that no, 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 no. Like, right, right, you right. can be yourself and you can succeed in the world of tech, whether that's in entrepreneurship 
or in the job search. So, and I actually, I, 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 that's actually something that started happening to me. So after I got like 1K followers, to be honest, uh -huh. on LinkedIn, I started getting like, like 10 connections per day requests. Yeah. And people <laughs> just like saying like, hey, Coral, do you want to be, do you, do you want to be in this internship? Hey, Coral, um, I have a question. Hey, Coral. And like, I, I, <laughs> I've been getting the, I'm so much like, yo, what the? Yeah, like, it's people, crazy. Like, let me tell you something. I feel like I'm just a regular person. Mm -hmm. And I'm just experiencing this. I'm like, cause I'm not like, I'm, I don't, I don't think I'm a content creator. I feel like I'm more of a creative person cause mm -hmm. I'm also studying film. And so for me, like making videos is more like a creative outlet. It's not really a, I don't see it like as a job. I'm like, I'm just having fun to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's like other people are like, like, uh somebody asked me like hey um is there anybody hiring at your job at your company i'm just like i don't have a company they're like <laughs> hey but like i want to help i'm like girl this is all volunteer <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> people like people actually think I, I work for somebody i'm just like nah bro this is it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> content creation <laughs> that's just it's just a part of it it is absolutely insane have you had it like like how was that like like first getting those like requests and dms you know like how did that first dm that somebody like like who 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 you didn't know how did that feel like it was it was strange it was strange to see um like I think the link the LinkedIn part was extra weird for me. Like growing on LinkedIn, because mm -hmm. like on TikTok it makes sense, you know, it's a yeah. social media platform. Like you're supposed to grow on that, mm -hmm. but seeing like opportunities being given on LinkedIn through the whole social media presence thing that was kind of crazy to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first time it was a it was actually an internship. Like it was, I think it was a straight up offer. I think someone straight up <laughs> offered. <laughs> just to for me to work for them at their company and like Damn. To take me like directly to their hiring manager like it was yeah. crazy wow and it, it was like i felt i felt crazy imposter syndrome firstly yeah there's no like not even on my tiktok or, or linkedin nothing showed off my credentials or anything it was just mm -hmm. that it was just the fact that i had a presence that that happened so damn that is crazy yeah damn it's, it's crazy you know, a lot of people, especially when you grow your brand, there's also the the other side where people don't necessarily agree with your authentic approach to, you know, being in the tech space. How 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 did you feel when people started, you know, spreading that hate or like giving you hate comments and things like that? I think um that's just something that comes along with building that brand is just not everybody's going to agree with what you do. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of those comments when I did the Fortnite LinkedIn posts. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like, why are you posting this crap on LinkedIn? And there's no point to it. Like, it's just brain dead stuff. Um, I mean, I at the end of the day, like, I see their point. Like, I know what they're saying. And I mm -hmm. guess it kind of makes sense. Like, LinkedIn is a professional place, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, if you're that if you're that like upset about another person's actions then it's like i don't know i feel like you shouldn't have to worry that much and i'm not going to worry that much about people who say that i'm just going to keep doing what i'm doing um but yeah i think just just really just ignoring it mm -hmm. and don't completely ignore it like see where they're coming from first maybe because mm -hmm. you could be in the wrong but if if it's real if it's just like a hate comment or it's like blah blah, mm -hmm. blah why are you doing this don't do this whatever just push past it it's fine wow that's amazing aiden i feel like it's like some people who are outside don't understand that like professionalism has changed a lot especially after covid and <laughs> so professionalism is more like i kind of think of it more like what you what you can you shouldn't be as vulgar as like if you can't say it on a disney channel show but also you don't have to be as like prim and proper because right. a lot of people who are, you know, who are you going to be speaking with, they're real human beings. And, you know, n the skills part is, does not take away from your personality because everyone has to do the technical interview, like everybody. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, and everybody, and you've, like you said, you've done projects before. So it's not like your skills are bad. You just happen to have a personality on top of that. 
It's mm-hmm. kind of like you have the base, which is like the cupcake, but then you have frosting and sprinkles, but it's still a cupcake, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, I think I think the issue is people like binarize stuff mm-hmm. for some reason. They feel like, like I, I could say the same thing with people who do like a bunch of LinkedIn, or not LinkedIn, sorry, a bunch of leak code. Mm-hmm. Like the idea is like if someone's like a leak code monkey, all they do is leak code. They don't mm-hmm. have projects and stuff. I think the issue is like, people think it's one or the other Mm -hmm. it's not always one or the other i think that's the problem like people can have both especially in this market it's forcing people to have both some things aren't always like black and white it's not always a person's either this or this anymore yeah and do you feel like the content space is oversaturated because you do see a lot of like people saying the same stuff like oh how to get a job in tech this is how you do it one two three four five uh-huh. Do you feel like if someone else is like comes up, I'm like, oh my god, there's too many people. It's oversaturated here. It's oversaturated in the market. I don't know what to do. What do you <laughs> What do you think about that? Um, honestly, I don't think. I think the if you're talking about the content space, I don't mm-hmm. think that's oversaturated. I think there's always um, a sort of niche that you could get into and grow off of that niche. Mm-hmm. If we're talking about like CS content creators, I could only name like five of them, and that doesn't seem too congested to me so i think the i think content is very it's very flexible you can do mm-hmm. content on a lot of different things there's always a community for something so yeah in my opinion i don't think it's it's oversaturated you just haven't found the niche mm-hmm. and it's also like everybody has a unique perspective you know so even though you're both in tech you're probably both in cs and you're saying similar things you can also make your content stand out by sharing a bit more about yourself because there's something there's a concept that i think about all the time where there was a point in your life where you did not have control over anything like you did not have control over what you eat you know control over what you wear and control over how you act so that was when you were zero to five years old And so that experience makes you unique in and of itself. And now that you're doing content, that's sort of like you are taking more of a control, more of an independent role on that. But you still have that experience where you did not have, you know, your childhood for per se. Nobody, even if you're an expert, nobody had no control. So that means that you right now, you are now showcasing yourself and what like you showcasing what you know and also how, who you are because who you are and what you know are two separate things but they can also be used to be you know combined together and so I feel like everyone has a, something to bring in you know the tech space or in the content space or in the entrepreneurial space because everyone's different like like everyone's similar but everyone's different at the same time so there is no like I'll say I'll say like Somebody told me this the other day, like, um, she was a, like a startup founder. She says that mm-hmm. the sun shines for everyone. Oh, that's a good quote. <laughs> and the world revolves around the sun. And so it's like, nobody on this earth <laughs> is not have any sunshine, except if you are like underground, but like the uh-huh. sun shines for everyone. Right, right, so right. there is, that is sort of like a a close minded, you know, limited mindset of like, Oh, I don't have enough. I can't do this enough. This is oversaturated, blah, 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 blah. But if you have an abundance mindset, it's kind of like, you feel like, Oh, there is enough. There is enough opportunity. There is enough money in the world. There is enough, there is enough space for you to exist as whatever you want to do, whether that's an engineer or a startup founder or a content creator. So, Aiden, you know, today we talked about so many things. Aiden, (laughs) thank you so much for coming onto the show today. I'm now going to give you the space to share how people can reach you and anything that you would like to promote. Sounds good. Um, Well, I would say the main way of communication is probably LinkedIn. I respond to LinkedIn DMs all the time. Uh, My LinkedIn is Aiden Okuma. Uh, So it's just my full name. Um, If you want to follow my TikTok, I give a bunch of information on internships there and a bunch of little tips i guess here and there with videos um my tiktok is buka uh, o-u-c-k-a-h and um yeah you can find everything on there it's awesome thank you so much aiden we did it thanks coral yeah. let's do a virtu- virtual high five Bow. thanks for listening to the forward thinker show podcast don't forget to like comment and subscribe so you never miss an episode